Hello my friends, welcome back to another painting lesson. It's been a while, it's been about two weeks now since I painted something, maybe a few days more than that. Um, it's been a very strange two weeks. Uh, we lost a family pet last week. Um, she was a little dog and um, little Shih Tzu. She was 13 years old and she was like part of the family. She was part of the family and sadly we lost her uh, last week. So. Um, it's been just tough trying to get back into the frame of mind for painting. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I sh I'm sure it happens to everyone. Sometimes you can happily paint um, for months and months on end. Every week you could sit at your easel and you can just paint easily. It just comes to you naturally. But there are some times where there's a bit of a block there and it's very difficult just to get motivated to pick up a brush. Um, so I've been like that now for the past two weeks. It's just, I'm just kind of putting it off and putting it off and putting it off constantly. Um, and I, was, I just found myself not being in the mood for painting, if you understand what I mean. Um, but I'm going to sit now here and I'm looking forward to painting something. Um, I woke this morning, nice and fresh. I'm looking forward to painting something for you today. All right, I'm going to paint because it's winter time now and I've seen a lot of them around lately. We're going into the wintry season. Uh, so I'm going to paint a nice robin redbreast on a branch. Uh, beautiful, subtle painting, you know, nothing too bright, nothing with greens and, you know, reds and all that kind of stuff. Just a nice, subtle painting of a robin redbreast. Um, I love the lighting in this photograph. It's a beautiful photograph. So, um, yeah, grab your stuff and follow me along if you, lo if, if you like. Um, Thank you so much for your support and thank you for subscribing and thank you to all my patrons as well, more importantly. Um, I'll have another lovely painting um, on Patreon coming in the next few days, sunset. We're going to paint a beautiful sunset, a kind of a wintry sunset, but very deep, dark, strong colours, okay? Anyway, let's have a bit of fun with this. I'll see you very soon. Um, don't go anywhere. Okay, let's do this. There's a reference photograph. Isn't that lovely? I think that's quite nice now. Uh, nice subtle colours. I'll tell you what palette I have today. Um, a fairly simple palette. Titanium white, Naples yellow, cadmium yellow pale, burnt umber, lamp black, magenta, cadmium red, uh, burnt cyanide and a tiny amount of phthalo blue. I have my 16 by 12 canvas here. Um, it's not primed, it's just a normal shop bought canvas. Okay, I didn't prime this one because I want the colours to dry nice and quickly. Um, and I did a quick sketch of my robin. Now, okay, it might not be everybody's taste, robin red breasts, uh, but I love painting them. And I think with the wintry season coming in, it would be a nice start. And we're heading into Christmas, so I think it would be rather nice to paint something like this for a change. Um, we've done a lot of sunsets and snow scenes the past couple of weeks. Something nice like this, I think. Right, nice simple background, okay? I'm going to start with just dampening my brush in some turpentine here, some thinners. Uh, I'm going to start with some white. It's a very kind of a subtle pink background, isn't it? I'm going to take some black and a hint of magenta. So immediately when I look at that photograph, I see in the background black and magenta, maybe with a hint of burnt umber as well. But that's the general feel I get when I look at this painting. The pinky kind of grey colour. See what I mean? It's a pinky grey. And by all means now you can mess around with your colours on this. Don't be afraid, don't be shy. Um, it's nice and subtle and that will draw our attention to the bird. Okay. Nice subtle grey there, maybe a little bit more on the pinky side. So let's take some more white and a touch of pink. You could even add a hint of burnt umber into this now as well if you like. Let's try a touch of it, okay? Just a touch to give us that kind of soft pink. You see that? I go right through my branch. I go around my bird, just around here ever so slightly, look, just like that. And I'm putting on a very subtle, thin coat of paint on this, okay? Tiny, tiny little, tiny amount of paint, not too much, because I want to be able to paint in my board afterwards without mixing too much on the background. So a thin coat always on the background, I find it just helps. It makes life much easier later on in your painting. 
I'll take a hit of brown in there. I'll be lightening this in a minute, so I'll take a touch of pink. I'm just going to put a splash of pink through here and there. Look, just just like that, very, very quickly. Um, and we have another piece of that color down on the bottom left as well. Tiny amounts of paint again. Now I'll take a touch of turpentine just to thin it again ever so slightly as I go, just to keep it thin. Okay. And go in here with some light pink. Now that's all I'm going to do with the colours. I'm now just going to clean my brush very quickly. I'm going to take some white. And I'm going to start just putting some white, scraping some white into that. Just kind of white paint on its own on your brush. Put it right on and scrape it around. Just soften it through the background here and there, okay? And that also gives you a little bit of movement as well in the background. Because we will be putting a nice soft blending brush on this in a minute. Again, just clean that. Keep your brush kind of clean. Clean the dark side off your brush. Let's take some white again. Go up here, put some white. And when I say, you know, when I say put some white on your brush, I already have colour on my brush, okay? It's not spotless. So the white is sort of mixing with the colour on the brush. You see what I mean? I just think that helps tie everything together nicely. So I'm not putting on pure, pure white. Realistically, when you think about it. Um, okay, let me get some more of that. Very thinly around the board, you see? Just very thinly. And I need more white paint. It's a very simple scene. Um, I think you'll enjoy painting something like this. A simple little robin redbreast on a branch is a lovely subject. Just if you're relaxing at home, chilling out, and you want something to just occupy your mind for an hour or two, this is the perfect subject, I think. Something like this, just to enjoy a bit of colour. Bring some colour into your day, isn't that right? Now what I'm going to do is take a very light blue. I know on the photograph that looks like just a very bright white, but I'm going to add a touch of blue into it. Just a touch. Phthalo blue and white. And I'll just put a touch. That's too strong. I'll just clean my brush and go into some white. I can even mix the white on its own into this. See? And that will just complement that pinky grey. A light blue will always complement the pinky grey, okay? Soften it in around here and there. And look, I go around in little circles with my brush just to kind of soften it all together nicely. But I'm still leaving the direction of my brush strokes. You see what I mean? You can still see the direction of the brush strokes. But I'm just softening the edges, that's all. And it's just a nice simple background. You don't have to go crazy with backgrounds, especially when painting birds and stuff like that. You can just keep it nice and subtle. Okay, I think that will do. Um, I might put a hint of snow. Should we put a hint of a piece of snow here and there on the background, perhaps? You can see the photograph. It has a couple of nice, just one or two bits of snowflake creeping into the painting, just here and there. Let's just take a bit of white, and let's just put a bit of white here. And another small one there. You can see what they are. Look, just one or two. Um, there, there, there. And then we'll soften these with our brush. Okay, that's all I'm going to do. I'm now going to take my soft brush and just going to very gently kind of soften these in slightly. Just so they fade into the background and kind of almost go off into the distance, don't they? Very gently, look. There we are. It's just something to look at in the background, that's all. Let's start with the branch. You have a lovely big, thick branch coming in here, don't we? Let me put my big brush away, I don't need that anymore. Um, burnt umber. And some black 
and a little magenta. Now I'm mixing a nice thick paint here, okay? I have a little turpentine in this, but it's nice and thick. I'm going to start with a very dark colour first. A bit of magenta. And let's just go. I'll start with a bird is first, just to, I know I can get that right then afterwards. I'm going to get a nice thick branch. See? Then it comes down like this, doesn't it? Turns up very suddenly. A very eye, very eye-catching branch, isn't it? Very, very eye-catching. This snake-like branch. I love these types of these types of branches and paintings. Get some black. Just go over here with some black, like that. And the beauty of painting with oils is, as you can see, it's picking up the background colour, that soft white, and it's making beautiful colours on the painting. And that's what I love about oil painting. Um, you see, it kind of picks up the colours underneath and it just makes it so nice and subtle to paint like this. A little bit of ready brown going through there. Okay. I'll take a little black now, a little touch of blue. And I go over here and just sort of make that slightly darker and slightly colder. You can see it's very cold on one side and sort of warm on the other side. I like that effect. And I want to get a nice sharp crisp line as well. Okay, so I don't want to kind of show the edge of the canvas, the canvas grain. I don't want to show that too much. So I'm giving plenty of paint in this. Lots and lots of paint. Give you a nice sharp edge. Okay. Now, there we go. Now it could even be thicker, I think. What do you think? Perhaps when we add the snow on here later, it might look okay. Um, so for now, I'm going to switch brushes, put that brush down, give it a quick clean, put it down. And I'm going to get a smaller, smaller brush, um, a small round brush, I think I'll try. And I'm going to start adding some cyanas into this. So, cyana, burnt umber. And I have only a tiny amount of turpentine in this, okay? Just a dab of turpentine. And then some Naples yellow. And we have these lovely bright branches down here, don't we? All on this side. So, for instance, let's just go like that. See? And then bring it over into this. And we come up here, let's almost turn this back on itself, like that. And a smaller brush then with lots of little wiggly ones. You can see those, they're lovely. Take some burnt umber, and with a smaller brush now, a good bit of turpentine, because you want this to flow nicely. But not too much, it's not watery, but it's nice and thin and creamy. And let's simply just go like that look. See, now a bit more turpentine. You can see when there's not a crisp line, you need more turpentine, okay? See, that's better now, isn't it? It's a little bit more watery. And we can have one here, like that. That's basically just have a bit of fun. That's it, just have a bit of fun. You can put as many of these in as you like. You can put loads or you can put just one or two. It's all up to yourself completely. Okay, another one coming up like that. One coming into the painting like this. And you can see we have just one or two more popping in 
like that. Now I will start putting some darks and lights on these. Let's just get some black, a bit of black. And I'm gonna put some little touches of black here and there on some of these. Because they're catching the light in certain angles, okay? You see, and that little bit of black just here and there, it just sort of helps bring them to life, doesn't it? And I'm using very thin paint again. Just here and there, okay? You don't have to go absolutely crazy with this. It's just a few branches, okay? Now I will add a little bit of highlight, just to one or two of these, I think it needs it. Um, I'll just get some Naples yellow, all right? And again, the lovely thing about oils with this is this will mix in with the colors we have, okay? And you'll get some nice soft mixing. See that? Now clean your brush each time you do this. Keep it nice and bright and fresh. Um, okay, let's put a little bit of that around here. So I'm just allowing it to naturally soften through. The paint, you see? Now I'll take some black and I'm just going to darken down under here just to separate these two branches a little bit more. And I'm going to take some of the lighter colour and just sort of mess around with it here just to create some texture on the branch, okay? I'm just, you see, I'm just sort of allowing it to hit and miss, creating texture. That's all I'm doing. Um, a little bit here and there, look. Just... Okay, so you can kind of see now what we're, what we're doing. Right. Now, I can keep it simple. I don't need to go to too much trouble with this. I might, however, add a slight light with my fan brush onto this. I'm going to take some blue, tiny bit of blue, some white, and a little magenta. And what I'm going to do is just add the tiniest amount of light across here. Look, and I'm going to flick it around in a little circle. And that just, you see, it just helps rough up the surface a little and gives a little bit of a turn, doesn't it? It gives you, almost gives you that kind of frosty feeling on the branch. A lovely frosty, wintry feeling. I'll take another tiny, tiny bit, just white on its own. And I can even do this with the snow on the left. Okay, so I'll take some white and a little blue. And that will give us a nice thick bed of snow down here. See? We're going to have a bit of pink in there as well. So let's get some mauve. Let's mix a little bit of mauve. I'm using tiny, tiny touches of colour now, okay? Be very careful not to overdo this.
little touches of light blue here and there. <clears throat> okay, now clean the brush and I'm just going to finally put on some very rich white, pure white. Just dabbing here and there. Just for the very tip, okay? And we have another little bit coming up like that, don't we? And you can see what I'm doing, it's just simply dabbing, dabbing with the brush, that's it. Um, okay, maybe a little along here. Now what I'm gonna do then, then is take my small brush again and I'm going to just go across this one again okay refine the edge of that and that will just push the snow back behind now just like that but again you know this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect you just do what you feel is nice for you okay that's what i'm saying and if you like it without the snow then leave the snow off it's completely up to you okay it's your decision it's your painting nobody else's okay now let's move on and do the robin red breast and this is the best part of it all i love painting the robins um it's actually quite simple okay i'm just going to get a nice little flat-ish brush in fact i'll use a little filbert i have a small filbert here it's a very old brush but it does come in handy every now and then um i'm going to start with the top it's like almost a greeny brown isn't it it's a funny kind of a color now this um to get right so i'll take some black burnt cyanide and touch of cadmium yellow Um, it's a kind of a greeny, browny, grey. It's a very tricky colour. It's a kind of a muddy colour. It's a tricky colour to get right. I think that's not bad. I'm going to go with that. So I'm just going to very loosely now with a very thin coat. Look, just pop this in. Scrape it along. And don't worry too much about your drawing as well, okay? Um, the drawing side of all of this is probably the most difficult, to be quite honest. For me, getting the scale is more important than getting the colours right. That's the way I see it. Um, you know, if it's too small, it's going to look funny. If it's too big, it will look funny as well. It just won't look right. Just trying to get it just right on proportions, I think, is far more important than getting the colours right. The colours will follow. It's just getting the proportions right, I find, is the main thing with painting birds, especially. Now, it still may not be right. But I don't mind. Let's let's carry on and see. Well, I'm going to start putting in um, a nice dark for the tails. Okay, I'm just going to grab some black and some burnt umber with some magenta. It looks black, but it's just a blacky brown. That's all. Okay. I'll clean my brush so I'm just constantly cleaning my brush now between colours that's all just very very quickly I'm going to start putting a little bit of a blue in there as well I'm going to take some phthalo blue with white and a little magenta and that'll give me a beautiful blue okay and I'm going to just start, start to mix that through the green here and there you see Isn't that wonderful? So it's just suggesting the light catching on the board just here and there. And I can use that blue then to come down here. So I'm just looking at the photograph now and I can see little hints of this bluey pinky color coming down into the shadow, the dark side of the board over here okay just like that 
clean my brush again. And then I have this soft grey mauve hue down at the end of down here. Some black, some magenta, and some white. And maybe a hint of Naples yellow, okay? That will soften the colour. Okay, now, let me just put this in first. If we don't like it, we can change it, okay, my friends? Don't worry, it's just paint. Only paint. I'm going to soften that in to that blue. Now, as it comes around, you can see it kind of gets very bright, doesn't it? So I'll clean that colour off again. Just dip it in your turpentine and onto your tissue. And then let's pick up some white. Maybe the tiniest hint of a blue as well. Tiniest, tiniest little hint. And I'm going to pop in the front of the robin red breast here. I'm using very thick paint for this. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of flicking through to create little feathers, the direction of the feathers, you see that? I'm kind of flicking it with the edge of my brush in through all of this dark. And at the end of the day, it really is just an impression. So you don't really have to try and be absolutely perfect with this. I get a smaller brush in the moment and just kind of put a few little flicks in with the smaller brush as well. But realistically, you know, you don't have to try and paint individual little feathers, you know. Um, I prefer more to go for an impression, a very good impression of a bird. That's all. I, you know, I'm not a type of person, they're not the type of artist who would sit here for three hours painting tiny little feathers individually. That's just not what I'm about. But just go giving a little flick through here and there, creating the impression of the feathers overlapping. That's all. A very, very quick impression. I'm using the hairs of my brush just to flick it out, look, and create tiny little individual lines. That's all. Now, if you want, if you want to go further, you can. Just take a fan brush. And pull them together softening it slightly okay and then you can if you want again just take some white on your fan brush and put some little flicks through it look see just like that and that gives you another little feathered look it's just something to bear in mind that's all Okay, I'm going to clean that brush again. So I'm using my same brush now for this. You could use a small flat as well if you like, or even a round. It's up to yourself. The next is this lovely orange we have, and this is the eye-catching part of the painting. So I'll try to do this nice, okay? Take some cadmium yellow and cadmium red. And that's the only reason we have these two colours on our palette. Just for the robin red breast orange, that's all, nothing else. And it's more red, isn't it? There's more of a reddy orange than a yellowy orange. So I'm going for a dark orange, okay? Let me take a look. Now, I think darker again. And not even that, even you could add a touch of burnt sienna. And that would give you a very browny orange. And that's probably more in keeping with the colour, isn't it? And you can see I'm using lots of thick paint. There's only a touch of turpentine in this. A really very small touch of turpentine. Now I picked up some cadmium red with cyan. And I'm going to go further down into this white, okay? 
And I've been careful not to mix it too much because the more you mix it, the more you're going to lose the strength of your colour. So just take your time. Take your time and don't mix it too much. Try not to mix it too much if you can. I'm going to soften it into the feathers here as well. Look, just let it all mingle together. And I'm going up and across. Over by the beak. Now, let's just fill it all in. So you can see the way I'm kind of softening this together ever so slightly, but not too much. Okay. The next thing for me is to get a small pointy brush. I'm going to just, see, a small pointy brush. I'm going to start putting in some highlights on this. Little turpentine, a little yellow and a little Naples yellow. Okay. Cadmium yellow and Naples yellow. And I can see just one or two little highlights, just slightly lighter colours going through it here and there, where the light is kind of bouncing off of the front of the robin. Okay. I can just make out little touches of it here and there. And if anything else, it just adds little interest into the colour. So it's not just one flat colour. Little couple of lights here and there is nice. And it just catches the eye. Even though they're very, very subtle lights, they do catch the eye. And they encourage the eye to move around when looking at something like this. Now I'm going to do the very same thing. With a darker colour. Get some cadmium red, burn cyanide. Okay, just a tiny amount. You can see what I'm using is just the tiniest little amount. And I just want to get the contour of the eye in so you can you see, so you can kind of tell there's a little shadow just around the eye area. Just soften it out, give it a little couple of flicks. I maybe get some burnt sienna on its own. Pop a little in here and there just to show the orange is getting darker as it turns. Okay. And put a little touch of that down the front here as well. And that will be a nice contrast, I think. Now I have more to do on the white down here. I'm going to be just adding a little more white into that momentarily. But I'll stop that for now. Leave it at that for now. And ba -ba boom. I'm looking around, looking around. I'm going to get some of the work done on the feathers. Just a little. I'm going to go back to my blue. And I'm going to just get a couple of little stripes of blue in here and there. Look, just, just to show the way the feathers are overlapping and the light is catching them. A couple down there. There's a couple of blue coming through the white down here. That's quite nice. I like that. That's helping to strengthen the shadowed area of the bird, I find. A couple of small ones up here. And even use the finger look and just drag them back like that. That's all great fun. Let's put in the eye first before I move on to the tail feathers. Take some black and this is important. We need to get the eye just right in relation to the beak. So I'm going to say the eye around here. Now I'm being careful not to go too big too soon with the eye because it's easy to make it bigger but it's more difficult to make it smaller if you make a mistake. I'll try that. I think I'll leave it at that. 
Then I'm going to take some Naples yellow with that cadmium yellow again and just pop a little highlight around the back of the eye there. And a tiny one. Not there. Okay, just like that. Then I put in the beak. And we'll just grab some black, maybe a little brown as well. And let's just pop in the beak. Now you want a nice fine point on your brush for this. I don't want to make a mistake with this. So I'm just going to go like that. I'll give it more of a curve, I think. And then you can see there's a little tiny highlight on that beak. It's a very, very small highlight just down here. Like so. That look okay? I think so. I think it's not bad, my friends. I'm gonna get some of that light blue pinky color and I'm gonna pop some lights into the feathers down here, okay? Now turpentine because this needs to flow. This really needs to flow nicely now. Look, just a couple of tiny, tiny stripes off of your brush. Just a few. Then I'm going to get some black, some nice thick black paint, a little turpentine in there. And I just really want to get some nice darks on these feathers areas down in the tail. Some nice proper, proper blacks, okay? Okay, how's that? And I think just a couple of dark browns across here. How's that looking now, my friends? Would you say we are successful in our painting? I would say we are. I think this is just, as a nice little beginner's tutorial, I think it's nice. We've we've captured what we needed to capture um, in a simple little Robin Redbreast. Now, I'm just going to add a little bit more white in here. Like that. But I'm just, at the same time, you see, I'm kind of softening them together. Does that make sense? Into the orange. So it's not a sharp, sharp, crisp line. And I pop a couple of little bits through here and there. Just to give, almost give that kind of ruffled look. I always love to paint Robin Redbreast and I think it's the perfect time of year to have a go. Why not? Just pick up your brush and try it. What's the worst that can happen? It's just a bit of paint. Let's get some claws on this guy. I'm going to just go like that. 
Okay, it's sort of hidden underneath, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, let's get another one like that. You can hardly even make them out on the photograph, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Just a little suggestion of a sharp claw down underneath, and maybe just put a little touch of cyan and Naples yellow just to give a tiny highlight here and there. Just to help the viewer see it a little better. Now, I'm just going to fix the eye. The eye for me now needs a little bit of refining, don't you think? And for the middle of the eye, just the tiniest touch of a light, whitey kind of a blue. Just to catch reflection or give the give the eye a little bit of life, I think. See, just like that. And I think that's all we need to do, my friends. I think that's all we need. I'm going to add a tiny touch of a whitey yellow just here and there on some of the branch here, just to suggest perhaps little touches of snow um, or it could be just little highlights on the branches itself um, it's really just to add a little bit of interest you see what i mean nothing in particular i'm going to put a little highlight up around here look just like that and then my friends I think we are finished. I'm going to sign this down here and say thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have. I've had great fun with this. And with Christmas on the way, it's always lovely to paint a robin redbreast for Christmas, isn't it? I think so. It's always wonderful to paint a little robin. And there you are, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. Let me see if I can zoom in slightly. Not that it makes a difference, but it might help. There we go. A nice, simple robin with nest. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute joy and a pleasure. And I feel I'm getting back into the swing of things after painting just something nice and simple like that. I think it really helps you just, you know, get that spark going again. It really does. Um, so yeah, there are some more wonderful paintings and I'm looking forward to Christmas. I must do a giveaway, actually. I must do a nice giveaway. I haven't done one hardly ever, really. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know. I can give away a painting or some kind of a prize free lesson on zoom or something like that so keep painting my friends and stay happy keep smiling um, i'll see you next week for another painting tutorial happy painting and god bless you all